we can separate some functionality to something like a plugin. This concept in Django called app application and in Flask it's a blueprint. Each blueprint is an isolated part of the functionality of our project. For example, a commenting system or a payment system or an authorization or maybe a chatbot or a telegram bot can be applications, can be blueprints. And each blueprint can be almost a completely separated code with its own logic, with its own HTML templates, with its own CSS styles and JavaScripts. And each blueprint is literally the folder with the code that implements a certain functionality. It can be easily copied and pasted to another project with Ctrl C and Ctrl V shortcuts. And right now I'm going to create one. I'm creating a new folder. I name it posts. And uh, inside this folder I'm creating a new file blueprint py. And here I have to import blueprint class from flask import blueprint. And now I need to create an instance of the blueprint class. It will be posts variable blueprint. And the first argument of its constructor is the name of this blueprint. I want to have the posts name. It's a string. The second argument is the name variable again, like we did with the instance of the Flask class name. And the purpose of the name variable here is the same. The Blueprint class will use it to determine paths to all files of the Blueprint. And uh, the third argument is the template folder parameter. It's a string, the name of the folder that will contain all HTML templates of the Blueprint will be templates. And uh, to say to Flask that he has a new Blueprint, I have to register it in my app. And also I want to stop my dev server here and I want to use run Atom plugin to start it from Atom. I want to see if something goes wrong. So I have to register my blueprint in my app. I am opening app py file. And here from posts folder post package from blueprint module I'm importing the posts variable. And uh, now the registration. I am using the app variable, the instance of the Flask class, and I am calling register blueprint function that gets the post variable an instance of the blueprint as the first argument. The second argument is the URL prefix. I want to have blog. It means that my blueprint will have local host 5000 blog address. And now let's create a view for the posts blueprint. I'm opening blueprint py file. And uh, I do it the same way like with the view of the Flask instance. But instead of the app variable, that is the Flask instance, I'm using here the posts variable. So posts root, it will be a root URL. And uh, I'm defining a new function that will handle requests to that address. It's a local host, in my case, blog. So, and then the name of the function will be posts list function. That will return a template. 
I'm calling the render template function. And uh, here I have to import the render template. Okay. And the first argument of the render template is the name of the HTML template I want to render. And so I have to create templates folder inside the posts folder. Templates. And also I want to follow Django's terminology. And so inside the templates folder, I am creating a new folder posts. And inside the posts folder, I want to create a template. Let's say it will be posts list, not just posts HTML. So the first argument is the path to the post HTML file. Posts, post HTML. And uh, in its turn, post HTML file will extend the base HTML file, the title block, post lists, a content block, maybe even blueprint. Let's check it. F5. I need blog. And I've got the page defined in the blueprint, posts blueprint. Okay, it works. And uh, now I want to change a bit the base HTML file. Base HTML. I want to have a link to the main page and I want to have a link to the blog, to this page. And also I want to wrap this content with a call 8 and a mx after. Just to have it centered. Okay. So, the main link will be Flask, for example, and the href attribute will be the following. I'm using two paired curly brackets and I'm calling URL for function. Its first argument is the name of the function that will handle a requests to this URL and uh, it will be index, index function because this function handles requests to the main domain. Let's test it. F5. And we can see that it works. Okay. The next link will be block link. And the href attribute will be the same. It's a URL for function and uh, I have to pass into it the name of the function that will handle request to that URL address. The function handler of requests to the localhost 5000 block URL is the posts list function that was defined in the posts blueprint. The name of the blueprint is the first argument that I've passed into the blueprints class constructor. So it was posts. And so the argument for the URL for function will be the name of the blueprint posts dot and then the name of the function that will handle requests to this URL. It's a post list function. Post list F5 and it works. Great. And uh, I want to focus your attention that Jinja2 Templator requires that we have to use parentheses for the call functions. URL4 has parentheses. Unlike DDL, 
unlike Django template language that doesn't require to use parentheses. It's the main difference between DTL and Jinja 2. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.